One of the things I hear most people say when they try to meditate for the first time is that they can't clear their mind. Well, clearing your mind shouldn't be the way that you start meditation. It should be a goal that you try to get to while you're meditating. In fact, not even just in the first meditation, probably after a long period of time uh, of meditating relatively regularly. That would be like going to the gym uh, for the first time and saying, uh, I can't lift weights because I can't lift 250 pounds, or I can't bench 250 pounds uh, the first time I go out. Well, yeah, of course, that doesn't make sense. The point of working out is so that you can work up to that, so that you can eventually lift 250 pounds. Meditation is similar in, in the sense of, at first, you're not going to be able to clear your mind. In fact, that's, that's sort of what meditation is for, is for you to learn how to clear your mind so that you can push away unwanted thoughts or, if necessary, push away unwanted emotions. Now, that's one of the things that it's for, or one of the benefits of it. But but really, you shouldn't enter meditation with, with the sense of trying to get some benefit necessarily. It really should be a practice. It really should just be a practice of trying to learn how to clear your head, how to see what's going on in there, and how to know what's going on with you. What meditation really is, is an intense form of mindfulness, where mindfulness is being really present to what's going on for you at any given moment. Uh, it's pretty hot right now in terms of pop psychology, a lot of thanks to a guy named John Kabat-Zinn, who uh, is responsible for really getting me thinking about things like meditation and mindfulness. So to start meditating, one of the things that you do is that you notice your breath. In fact, that's all you do. You stay with your breath. Some people close their eyes and meditate. Some people keep their eyes open. In fact, Zen practitioners generally say that you should keep your eyes open while meditating uh, because life hits you, uh, real life hits you with distractions. In real life, you can't keep your eyes closed in order to get your head clear. In real life, if you want to get your head clear, you probably need to do that in the midst of a heated argument or in the midst of a stressful time at work or something like that. Uh, but this is up to you. You know, I'm not going to be one of those guys who prescribes this type of meditation over this type of meditation. Uh, there are lots of types of meditation. You can read up on some of the research on which ones are better or which ones are, are worse for certain things for certain types of relaxation or certain types of focusing or certain types of uh, being present in a moment, etc., etc. Um, but generally, the best way to start meditating is with your breath. And this is what a lot of the practices of meditation have in common, is that you start, you start with your breath. Eyes open, eyes closed, sitting, standing, walking, lying down, in the middle of you know, a tough meeting where your boss is yelling at you, wherever it is, the main thing that you're gonna do is come to your breath and attend to your breath. Now, some people, this is a tough thing to do because when they try to notice their breath, they immediately uh, wanna control their breath. And in fact, here comes your first lesson if, if that's you. One of the things that you can learn out of meditation, and I don't want to say that meditation teaches you, it, it is more of an experiential uh, learning uh, that, that you're going to get based on your own, your own meditation and your own mind and your own physicality and your own emotions. But one of the things that it can teach you is to notice where your mind goes or where your body goes or where your emotions go. Uh, when you just try to sit still when you just try to sit still and be quiet and watch your breath. Now for some people, like I said, they're going to immediately notice that they are tempted to try to control their breath, that it's hard for them to just watch their breath. And this might be your first lesson, right? When you start to try to notice your breath, what ends up happening is you try to control your breath. And that's tough, right? And then you're thinking about it the whole time and then you have this anxiety about what if I stop thinking about it? Am I going to stop breathing? Will I die? 
probably not. Your body will take back over. And, and there it might be a second lesson for you, right? That you can let go and that your body will still do what it has to do in order to keep you alive. And, you know, you're not going to fall dead uh, trying to meditate for the first time. But watching your breath is the, the best way to get started. And this doesn't even necessarily mean breathing in a certain way. Take a deep breath, right? Some people will start uh, their meditation practice like, like that. One of the best ways that I have heard of meditation started uh, was by a woman, and unfortunately I forget her name, but it really stood out to me that the way she opened her meditation was continue to breathe deeply. Now, whether you were or not, it does subtly push you in that direction, and breathing deeply does help you relax, does slow down your heart rate, does calm you down. Uh, but it doesn't, you don't want it to be the type of thing where you feel like, oh, I have to breathe deeply. So I really like that opening, that starter of continue to breathe deeply. That sort of indicates that don't really change anything about what you're doing. Just, just become aware of it. Become of, aware of the fact of how you're breathing. And if your breathing is a little labored, maybe you do want to slow it down, but maybe not. Mostly, you're just noticing. And really that's all meditation really is, is just noticing what's going on for you. And so as you're breathing, you just stay with your breath. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to get distracted. You're not going to be able to clear your head. You're going to do that for a breath, a breath or two, just the inhale of the first breath, and then your mind's going to wander. You're going to start thinking about what's for dinner later, or the movie that you want to watch, or why your parents are fighting, or the thing that your boyfriend said to you before you left uh, for work today. Whatever it is, those things are going to pop into your head. And let me help you out by saying that's normal, and that's to be expected. Now, what you don't want to do is try to push those thoughts away and say, whoa, 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 what, am I, what I'm supposed to be doing is, is not thinking about anything. Well, the process of doing that, the process of telling yourself what you're supposed to be doing is in fact another thought. What am I having for dinner? Oh no, I'm not supposed to be thinking what I'm having for dinner. I should probably clear my head. How do I, you know, blah, 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 blah. And if that's happening, that's fine too. But don't purposefully walk in that direction. What you really wanna do is just notice those things. Okay, that's where my head goes. And gently bring yourself back to your breath. You don't have to say anything about it. You don't have to give yourself a hard time. If you, if you, if you notice your mind, if you notice your mind wandering in that way, just bring yourself back to your breath. I went on a retreat once and uh, this line stuck with me uh, above all else that happened there, which was that when you find yourself in those moments, and this can be applied to a lot of areas of your life, but when you find yourself in those moments, uh, come at it not with a hammer, not with a sledgehammer, in fact. Boom, I'm supposed to be doing this, or I'm not supposed to be doing that. You know, don't come at it with this attacking mode of this is how I'm supposed to be, I'll know I'm fucking it up again. Don't come at it with a hammer, but come at it with a feather, right? Gently, oh, that's what I was doing. This is where I am now. And you're back in your breath and you're back in the meditation. And then maybe this time you get two breaths and now you're thinking about uh, what you're doing the next day or all the work you have to do, whatever. Bring yourself back to your breath. Now some people have a pretty easy time clearing their head of thoughts, but what is a little more difficult, and it's, it's tough to really articulate this I guess, but uh, I've heard people say, and sometimes this happens for me, is that it's not so much thoughts that comes up, uh, but maybe feelings, right? Maybe you get caught up in a feeling, and then maybe you start having thoughts about the feeling uh, that you're having. And that's, that's okay, too. You just want to note that. Just watch it go by. And as I said, with a feather, bring yourself back to, back to your breath. Now it's gonna to be tough, right? I mean, just straying and coming back and straying and coming back, that in and of itself can be 
tiring and that's why some people have a hard time meditating at first is because they can't really stay in that in that zone for too long they keep jumping in and out and eventually maybe one of those thoughts will will get them right they'll end up on this tangent of you know planning their next vacation for the next 15 minutes in their head with their eyes closed sitting in full lotus <clears throat> um before they realize oh shit i was meditating that's how i got here but the key thing uh, of it is is that at some point you made that observation and you saw where your head went and you saw the thoughts that came up or the feelings that came up or what you got distracted and wouldn't did right some people might just get up they start thinking about oh the kitchen needs to be cleaned as mine does you can't see it but the kitchen needs to be cleaned and they get up and just start cleaning the kitchen and they're like oh, how the hell did I get <laughs> well, I'm washing the dishes right oh I was meditating and I just ADD over to the to the kitchen right and there's a lesson in that and and if meditation is for anything, right, and in the, in the Buddhist masters, the Zen masters, right, will tell you that it's not for anything. It's kind of a trick, but it, 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 I'll explain what that's supposed to mean here in a minute. But if it is for anything, it's for getting you to see yourself. It's for getting you to see how you are so that you can exercise some better control if you want or preparation or understanding uh, of who you are and how you operate so that you can be the master of your own mind, of your own decisions, of your actions, and have some air of control. And I don't mean this in a restrictive way. I just mean in a, you know, I don't, it's, it's not helpful for me to be thinking about that right now. Or it's not helpful for me to be feeling this way right now. Let me see if I can quiet that and attend to the thing that I need to be doing. If that's hanging out with my friends or if that's, uh, you know, taking care of my kids or spending time with a, a partner or a spouse or uh, some other loved one. Our meditation is really about just getting a sense of knowing who you are and how you operate, right? It, it is this intense mindfulness. It's a way of noting what's going on for you so that you're not surprised and you're not carried away so easily, right? If you can be sitting and trying to have this clear meditative moment and all of a sudden get up and go wash the dishes, well, imagine how that is for you in real life. Imagine what it's like when you're in the middle of a meeting and your boss is talking to you about something and your mind wanders and he says, did you get that so-and-so? And you're like, well, uh, you know. But if you have been meditating or at least being mindful uh, of yourself in some way, you might notice that, hey, I'm sitting in this meeting and oh, there go my thoughts thinking about that vacation again. I'm supposed to be attended to this right and maybe you keep doing it but maybe you find a way to 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 mediate the fact that your attention weighs right maybe it's not about changing anything it's just about knowing how you are knowing who you are and so maybe you take notes and jot down some things because you know you're gonna get distracted in a few minutes of your boss talking and so when he says hey what do you think of that you go oh well I did write down that he said this. I, I, thought, I thought this before I got distracted. Don't tell him the distracted part. And so I told you I'd tell you about why many practitioners and masters of meditation and Buddhism in general will say that uh, meditation isn't for anything, that you're not supposed to expect anything out of it. It's like this quantum, it's, it's like in this quantum state, right? It's like in a superposition. Yes and no. Uh, the yes of it is that if you go into meditation expecting something, well then you're not going to fully be able to empty your thoughts, to empty your feelings, right? You're going to be holding on to this little piece of hope, or you're going to be holding on to this little piece of, this is how I'm supposed to do it, or this is what I'm supposed to be feeling, or this is how you do it right. If, if you have this expectation of what meditation is, or what it's for, or you're gonna get frustrated after you've done it for a couple weeks and you're still, you know, uh, you still got the same temper that you had before you started. And, and it's gonna make you wanna quit, right? You're gonna feel like, oh, it's supposed to be for something and I'm not getting anything out of it, right? And so the reason some of the masters will tell you, hey, meditation isn't for anything, it doesn't teach you anything, right? It's sort of this trick to get you to just go into it for doing it for its own sake, 
right? And that's kind of what mindfulness is about. That's certainly what Zen is about, right? Is that you're just doing the thing for its own sake. You're not doing a thing expecting to have this outcome on the other side. Let's say you're a student, and it's the difference between learning to get the A or the B and learning for its own sake. Now, in which case are you going to learn better? In which case are you personally going to get the most value out of it? Now, of course, maybe the A helps your GPA. What if you go into that class and your purpose in learning is to really learn, is to really be present to the information that's being given to you for its own sake, right? You're intrinsically motivated to just learn what's coming to you. And in that way, in that way you're attending, you're paying attention because you want to learn and you're going to learn better because you want to learn not because you just want the A because some days you won't want the A right after you've gotten 100% on the first three tests and in the fourth test the professor says well if you've got an A in the class you know you don't have to you know you don't have to even take this last test well guess what those guys or those girls that are in it just for the A are going to check out in that last quarter of the class but the people who maybe have an A anyway, or have a B, or even have a C, who came to the class to learn because it's interesting to them, and they're just doing the learning for its own sake, those people are gonna pay attention to that last quarter of the class, no matter what their grade is, and they're gonna have gotten the most out of it. And so that's why the masters will tell you, hey, meditation isn't for anything. Well, it's just so that you go into it with this sense of, I have no expectations, and I'm just doing this to do this, right? And maybe you need it in the moment, and maybe that's, maybe that's what it's for in that moment, is I just need to be present. But I, but I think that's as far as they would say that you should take it. Don't try to prescribe that this is going to cure your X, Y, and Z, or that this is going to make you a more relaxed or enlightened person, or whatever else uh, ideas of you know, how you're gonna be awesome if you are if you become this great meditator and you can meditate every day for an hour. Yeah, maybe. But you're gonna be really disappointed if that's not what happens. Maybe you get something else out of it. And you shouldn't go in with these expectations of this is who I'm gonna be at the end of this process because you're gonna be disappointed and you're gonna be distracted with your meditation if you go into it thinking that I'm I'm looking to gain something at the end of all this. And you might also quit once you feel like you've gotten it. And then and then where are you? I mean that's fine if you want to quit. Like and, and I'm not saying that sarcastically. If if you feel like you've gotten what you need out of it, sure. But you don't wanna quit just because you set some goal and now you got it or you didn't get it and I, I don't know. Maybe it's okay. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I do think that it's best to just enter it with this open and present mind and to, and to stay there. I had, a, I had a mentor once who talked about therapy, psychotherapy, as a type of co-meditation. But what she meant by that was the fact that in therapy in particular, you are intently focused on your own process. Now in therapy, you usually have somebody else helping you do that, which is why it might be, you know, particularly helpful for some people who have a hard time focusing or being mindful on themselves. But you're getting that same process, you're getting that same process in meditation if you can learn to watch yourself in that way. And really that's what meditation is about, is just watching yourself and figuring out what happens when you try to sit still or when you try to notice your thoughts or when you try to notice your breath and in other forms of meditation when you try to notice your body or when you try to notice your existence, right? What happens when you go to that place? or you try to go to that place, and you try to just be with what's there. Not changing it, and not avoiding it, or denying it, or you know, 
know, punishing yourself for what you find, but just saying, oh, oh, that's, well, that's what that is. That's what that feels like. That's how I feel. That's what I'm thinking about. That's what it's like when I get distracted. That's how easily I get distracted. All of that stuff you can't see about yourself unless you get some good help. Right? I do think therapy works. Or unless you can sit quietly with yourself and just learn to observe. Really, meditation is just about watching and seeing what you find. That's all. So if you'd like to read more about meditation, uh, let me recommend a few books. Uh, one of them is Breath by Breath by Larry Rosenberg. That's uh, a pretty great book in terms of really just buckling down and thinking about how to stay with your breath. He does a really good job of giving you uh, some guides in terms of thinking, staying with your breath and, and how to practically do that. But he also does a good job of talking about the spiritual side and what types of benefits you might begin to see out of meditation. Now I know I just went on and on about meditation not being about any benefits. Um, but in my opinion, he does this in a way that doesn't make it goal-oriented. It doesn't have you focusing uh, on some outcome, but really uh, more about attending to the changes that you might see in yourself after you've been meditating for a while. Another book I like uh, is by a guy named Shunryu Suzuki, and it's called Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Now that book doesn't so, isn't so much completely just about meditating. The first third, I believe, the first third of that book is, sorry I don't have it with me, it's at my office. The first third of that book is specifically about meditating. In fact, I think the first chapter is just how, about how to sit. The rest of the book is more about taking those lessons into life uh, through the eyes of a Zen practitioner. Uh, with a particular focus on this idea of beginner's mind, uh, which maybe I'll do a video on that sometime if people are interested. Uh, and the third book I would recommend is a pretty popular book called Wherever You Go, There You Are, and it's by John Kabat-Zinn. And this is a book that's more about mindfulness and just attending to what's going on for you in any given moment, whether you be, again, washing the dishes or out cutting the grass or at work or in the middle of a meeting or just trying to get to sleep at night or whatever it is. It's really just about being mindful to yourself uh, in those moments. And that book, uh, and John Kabat-Zinn in general, especially in his early works, uh, does a lot more focus on attending to the body uh, specifically beyond maybe attending only to the breath or attending to the thoughts, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so those are three books that I really like uh, and I'll encourage you to pick them up. I'll try to put some links down uh, in the notes so that you can get a link to Amazon or something that, to, to just see more about them. I only have this one uh, with me right now. Uh, beyond that, I welcome any questions that you might have about this or other stuff. Uh, I'm really planning to do videos on a variety of things, but I'm sure I'll return to the topic of meditation and mindfulness uh, at some point, especially if people are interested and you have more questions. Um, I'm just starting out here, so if you wouldn't mind liking or subscribing to my channel, uh, hopefully we'll get some more stuff going. And until next time, take care.